Hi, I'm Iga. I'm a research fellow at the Faraday Institution and the University of Oxford Department of Materials. So in this video, I will share with you our recent progress on visualizing the lithium-ion distribution in lithium-ion electrodes via plasma FIP and SIMS. So firstly, I want to highlight three keywords in the title. Lithium-ion battery, electrodes, plasma FIPS and SIMS, because we are going to follow this logic one by one. So let's firstly start from a daily application of the lithium-ion battery. For those of you who use a wireless earbud to watch this video, there is actually a piece of lithium-ion battery inside. Now let's zoom in and take a close look at this battery. There is a piece of cathode, normally the lithium compound, a piece of anode, normally graphite, a porous separator as a physical barrier between these two electrodes to avoid short circuit. We have the lithium ion conducting electrolyte and the current collectors from the both sides. So for this earbud, the weight of the lithium ion battery is about 1.6 gram, almost one third the weight of the earbud. We might feel surprised of this number. Now let's zoom out and imagine this is a battery for a car or a bus. Then the mass of the battery would be enormous. Now let's pause a little bit and take a one more step back. And see this is little lithium ion battery from a different angle, how it could contribute to the carbon zero filter. We are aware of the dramatic uh, increase of the battery-driven vehicles. We are not familiar how this battery could contribute to the solar and uh, wind power. So both the solar and the wind power are fluctuating resources with varying levels of energies being produced. Batteries could be used to store the electricity and a composite for the moment when the wind is not blowing, the sun is blocked by the cloud, or it is set at night. So by using the battery into the grid scale energy storage system, uh, we are able to balance between the uh, generation and the utilization of power. So the study of a battery could be applied in a big picture with big impact. Therefore, it is necessary to investigate and understand how the battery works, how the chemistry distributes, especially the lithium ion distribution, and then based on the information, we are able to design the battery wisely so that we can decrease the mass of the battery without a sacrifice on the energy storage and the lifespan. So now let's firstly start from the first question, how does a lithium ion battery work? During the discharge, the lithium ions jump into the electrolyte, past the separator, and are stored in the cathode. The electrons move towards an out circuit. During the charging, both the lithium ions and the electrons move in the reverse direction. So all these components are contributing to the operation of a lithium-ion battery. For example, we are interested to the performance, the energy density, power density, and lifespan. And this performance are important to our daily application, from the earbud, wireless earbud, mobile phones, uh, electric vehicles, etc. Therefore, to better design the battery, it is necessary and we actually we want a deeper understanding of the physical and the chemical properties of the electrodes. To better understand the physical and the chemical property of the electrodes, here we use a plasma FIB combined with EDS and SIMS. So in this whole system, the SEM is used for imaging, PFIB is used uh, for the cross-sectioning and the polishing. The high current capability of the plasma FIB allows it to melt an uh, area with a large area and a bigger volume at a shorter time scale with less beam damage compared with a conventional gallium-based FIB. 
and most of the elemental distribution could be obtained by the EDS. However, the critical lithium distribution is not available from the EDS due to the low energy a low X-ray energy and also the low, possible, low probability of the emission. Therefore, here we use the SIMS to detect the lithium ion distribution. To physically combine the EDS and the SIMS in this plasma FIB system, it is required to have a, a pre tilled geometry and also the generation of new workflows, which is able to combine the imaging cross section. Uh, the, the cross-section uh, modeling and the, uh, in, and the data capturing from these two detectors at the same time. So also here we use an air-sensitive workflow which is able to protect the electrodes since they are air-sensitive and moisture-sensitive. The right side of this uh, slide are the comparison of the lithium foils with and without such a system. We can see that the lithium foil with this uh, inert atmosphere transfer system is quite clean, almost with no oxidation on the surface. However, the lithium foil without such a, such a system oxidized very fast. As we mentioned before, the EDS is used for detecting the non lithium element. For example, for the lithium manganese oxide cathode, we are interested to the manganese, carbon, oxygen, and fluorine. And we are able to use the SIMS detector to detect lithium. So here we have two sets of data sets from two different detectors. Therefore, they only partially overlap and with different vocal size and different grid scales. Therefore, post-experiment, uh, it is necessary to design uh, new algorithms and the imaging processing uh, protocols to combine and merge these two data sets together. So here, in, after the pre-processing of the image, we are able to make these two data sets at the same grid scale and align them at the same area of interest. And then we resample them to the same voxel size. Then the data sets are ready for the 3D visualization and correlation analysis. So now let's take a close look at the electrode that we achieved. The lithium ion battery is dismounted in an argon filled glass box without re pre washing to avoid the influence of the solid electrolyte interface compound. So the thickness of the electrode is about 700 micrometers. We lack of information how this commercial electrode being, man, being, uh, manip being manufactured. However, we assume there is a high pressure during the manufacturing process since the CBD, the carbon binder domain, is quite dense and also the porosity of the electrode is quite low. The cracking of the active material could be observed through the whole electrode. And also, we could see that there is a cracking of the, in the electrode scale in the horizontal direction, which is probably due to a high pressure in the perpendicular direction. From the secondary uh, backscattered uh, electron the image, we can see that uh, the, there is a tremendous amount of the small pieces active materials with irregular shapes sitting between the big particles, probably the fractured pieces. So we can also see that the uh, CBD domain is not homogeneous across the whole electrode. There are very obvious agglomerations uh, here marked in blue. Now let's take a look at the elemental analysis. So here is a carbon network of the electrode and also we are able to detect the fluorine which mapping overlapped most of the carbon network. Compared with this EDS mapping, uh, the SIMS mapping is more sun-surface sensitive. We could observe the uh, delineation of the active material boundaries in the, from the SIMS analysis. Since that the fluorine 
uh, mapping is almost overlapping the carbon mapping, we would uh, assume that the fluorine came from the binder, possibly the PVDF. So what interests to me is that where there is rich in carbon, it is not necessarily rich in fluorine. And it means that uh, indicating that in the first step of the manufacturing process, the mixture of the carbon black and binders are not well mixed. So this methodology could be used to make the connection between the industrial manufacturing process and the electrode engineering in a real life application. So this work has been supported by the Harry Rose Institute, Faraday Institution, and the DCEM's uh, Microscope Center. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, feel free to contact me if you are interested to this work and would like to discuss more possibilities. Thank you.